Welcome to the British Online School podcast, where we are coming to you today from our caravan in Devon, where we're still on tour with the England Beach Soccer youth team, and we're sponsoring all of their tournaments and teams as well. And as we sit in our caravan, I just happen to be joined by a living legend. Today, we are joined by Mel Hazan. Hazan, yeah. Hazan, sorry for saying that incorrectly. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. And now before we begin, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Mel and about what she's going to be doing in the future as well. And I'm going to get to know her a little bit better. So Mel has not only done bobsledding for her national team, broken the world record in um, powerlifting, but also by the end of the year could well be the first ever woman from the Royal Navy to get the Green Beret of the Royal Commandos. Thank you once again for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe it. You just walk into the caravan, your friend introduces us and tells all of this stuff about you. Yeah. But really, can we start from the beginning? So, breaking a world record. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And like I was saying to you when I was giving you this story before, like, I just couldn't believe that, that was something that I was doing at the time either because it was a sport that I happened to just fall into by accident. So, obviously, I'm a PT in the Royal Navy, so... I just didn't do any sport, really. I didn't have a fix on anything, a hobby or anything like that. So, there was... a powerlifting competition going on one day for my unit in the Royal Navy and I went into that powerlifting competition and broke the Royal Navy's record for deadlift and I was like oh god like, this strength's this strength's coming from nowhere and then they asked if I wanted to go on to do the UK Armed Forces powerlifting championships obviously representing the Royal Navy and I was like do you know what like this is this could be a thing so yeah let's do it so I went to the UK Armed Forces champs and broke that world record and then it just spiraled all of that control. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have one of those Guinness World Record certificates up in your house then, do you? Uh, it's not a Guinness record. I've got the actual World Record certificate from the um, uh, Powerlifting Federation, yeah. So I have got the certificate and the medal. and I've actually got it tattooed on my arm as well. Oh, yeah, where's that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That's, that's one of them. So that's when I got 200. <laughs> and then I went to an international one for the LGBT committee. So I was representing that umbrella. Uh, and I broke the World Record again there. So, but yeah, that's the... Um, so you go on you break these records which is incredible enough but then you're spotted for another sport aren't you yeah, yeah no again just totally random so i posted my world record uh, so i lived i lived under the um, world drug free powerlifting association and um, the reason it's called drug free well, because there's a couple of different associations but it's because these specifically specifically test the drugs at every single event they go to and i just think that's a, a more positive yeah, that seems it. quite right yeah yeah so i lived with that federation and it's, it's worked wonders for me and then i moved over to bobsleigh just because i posted my world record on my social media and then they just came into my instagram and asked if i'd like to go to the british trials and <laughs> lo and behold i managed to secure a spot on the <laughs> did you think there were some similarities between the sports because to me that doesn't ring something like powerlifting bobsledding yeah strength i think it's more strength i'd say something i really did have to work on was my sprinting because just picking up a heavy weight and sprinting are two completely different concepts aren't they <laughs> so yeah i had to really really work on my sprinting and lucky for me misha mcneil who's currently the uk's number one um driver uh bobsled driver and um, she helped bring me on with that and so did a lot of the teammates and it was testing at time because a lot of people were a lot better than me. And I was like, although the times weren't that different, that's because I could hit the sled nice and hard because I'm strong. But then when we're running down the track, that's where they they sort of pick it up because they're yeah. the So, I mean, it was testing, but it was also fun. So have you, because you say you're a PTI in the Navy, which is obviously very sport-led and exercise-led. Were you always like this as a child as well? Very sport and active, active I mean, even? I was a child. Uh, I did do a lot of sports like football and netball for the school, but I think they typical sort of, sports that you kind of mess, uh, like fall into naturally um but when I joined the navy I, I was actually became overweight so I weighed 16 and a half 17 and a half stone eventually and kept failing my fitness test I sort of fell into a horrible cycle where I'd go to sea eat the world not really train and then it just sort of spiraled out of control and with that I kept failing it for about nine months and you've only got 12 months to pass it. So if I'd have got to that 12-month mark and still hadn't passed, I would have been um, service no longer required in the Royal Navy and I would have been kicked out with no job. Um, so the commanding officer at the time where I was serving said to me, look, I'm giving you six weeks to pass this because if you do not pass, you are going to be handing your ID card to me and we're going to be kicking you out of the Navy. And I think that was enough. That was what I needed to sort of pass my fitness test, which then led... The main reason I needed to do it is for myself more than anything, but also because I wanted to go to Afghanistan. Um, you wanted to go? I wanted to, yeah. I mean, I joined the military to not go to war because nobody wants a war, mm. but to defend my country and 
do what I can for my country. Um, yeah, and then I ended up going to Afghan, losing all the weight in that seven months whilst I was out there. Came back, fit as a fiddle, passed my fitness test with flying colours, and I couldn't believe it myself. And then the PTI, actually, that took that fitness test when I got back from Afghanistan, said to me, oh my God, you should be a PTI. I was like, what? I, can't, I can't be a PTI. <laughs> Bearing in mind, seven months before, I'd only just scraped my fitness test because I was five stone heavier. So it's, yeah, it's just madness. And a PTI is a physical training instructor, yeah, sorry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. physical training instructor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I get to shout at people. <laughs> <laughs> so you go from being overweight in your words, failing your fitness tests, to becoming a PTI, and now you're on the next level mission, aren't you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tested me this year what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to break a mould and... To, I'll be the first female Navy rating to pass the commando course if I were to pass it. Um, Can you just explain just, to us a bit what that course is and so what it means? Just, so to become a War Marine commander, you've got to pass a 36-week arduous course. Um, but the first sort of 12 weeks of their training, they are being taught how to be soldiers, basically. And now we don't need to do that because I'm already a soldier. So what they try and do is they get external people. So if you're in the Army, the Navy, or the RAF, and you want to wear a green beret or you want to be a commando, they offer you an 11-week course, and it's very condensed of all the commando tests that you've got to do, like the 30-mile speed march with um, 21 pound and a rifle, so 30 pound altogether on your back. Um, and it's you've got to do that within eight hours. There's just tests and criteria you've got to do to sort of test your mental resilience more than anything, and then hopefully prove that you're physically able to do half the stuff that the Royal Marine Commandos do. So if I pass, I'd be a Royal Navy Commando. So why is it? Why are you going to be the first woman to do this then? What's changed? Has the laws or regulations changed recently? No, so no regulations have changed. Um, a few people, so the army have got a couple of officers that have been through it. Um, and it's just hard. It's just a hard course to pass. And I don't think it's very inviting for a lot of people because if you look at sort of the weather today, it's raining, miserable, and you're expected to go out in the field and sleep under a poncho and eat out of a mess tin and then go and shoot. <laughs> the target somewhere to see if you've got the mental resilience to do that so and you're doing that not just for a day you're doing this for weeks weeks on end um but yeah i mean this is what we join up for as well. uh, if you say so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> so um so in the navy i'm not if people are aware or not but sometimes there's slightly less uh stuff for a woman to do or the time slightly extended but with this royal marine course it's you're you're competing with the men aren't you yeah there's no there's no shift in um times the, the times are all exactly the same so if they have to get, which we do, um, a standard on the bleep test to go on the course, then we have to also get that standard as well. There's no, we have to get do all the pull-ups, we have to do the sit-ups, press-ups, and then the run as well. There's no, that's just to get onto the course, <laughs> yeah. just, to, just to get onto the course. There's also a phase at the beginning where you do a four-week beat-up course, and it's it's called a beat-up course because it's making sure that you are physically capable to like be on that 11-week course. So not only are you doing the four-week course to then do the one-day test to then do the 11-week <laughs> course, it's just... Test up test, but you've got to meet the criteria, and the criteria is there for a reason, isn't it? So. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on yourself personally to do this, but as the first woman from the Royal Navy, do you feel that adds pressure to you? Yeah, I mean, I'm anxious most mornings when I wake up going into work. I don't know if I'm, sure, I'm the only woman in the office, but, uh, but because of what's, what I see in front of me. Um, but the good thing about me being base here is I get to see what it is that they actually do on the course because I, I strike on some of those lessons, so I'm part of one of the being one of the instructors on the lessons is like it's valuable, so I may as well use the time while I'm there. Um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be tough. And are are you doing this in the um what's the word in the event that you might inspire other women to do it, or yeah. is this purely purely just for you? I mean, I wanted to do it five years ago, and I did try to do it five years ago, but unfortunately, I, I passed the criteria to get to the test. Um, and I passed it on that Thursday, and then over the weekend, I broke my hand, so oh. I couldn't then go on to do the course um, and then the time just never came around so what the Navy offered me recently well at the end of last year they said look we can put you on the elite scheme on the elite athlete scheme still to continue with British bobsleigh or the billet has just become available in Linston like the posting to go and do this course so which which road you want to take and uh, yeah I mean it was a no-brainer for me to go back to work Brilliant. I mean, sometimes I question why I did but yeah no it's, uh, I, I do love it so before we go on to move on to talk about your education, would you recommend the armed forces to to young people now who may be thinking of going in that direction? A hundred percent. It's definitely made me the person I am today. Um, it's I I, could, I joined at sixteen, so I joined straight after my GCSEs, went straight into the War Navy, and I've spent the last eighteen years like serving my country. So 
it's shown me it's took me around the world it's took me to third world countries it's secured a great pension for me at the end of 22 years but you don't have to sign for 22 years <laughs> um and it's just a constant security like free dental free medical and you meet your best friends you meet your friends for life and i've got so many friends dotted all over the world that i know that i could go and see at the drop of a hat if i was in like troubling times and stuff like that so 100 percent, like i wouldn't but i'd say yeah definitely the Royal navy not <laughs> right okay and maybe the marines in a couple yeah, of weeks yeah. time when you pass that yeah. <laughs> um so if we can go back to your education now so you're clearly quite a driven person like everything you've achieved i mean sounds like you just walked at the world record wow. for powerlifting but to get in the bob the today team and what you're aiming to do next is, is incredible do you feel your education or your time at school helped with that at all um honestly i was a bit of a toe rag at school um I did get B's and C's and whatnot I wanted to do. And I think the higher grade you get, there's more potential for you in the Royal Navy, for sure, um, because you become, become an officer. Um, so if you do get those grades, then I, I do sometimes wish I had so that I could be an officer because of, again, not everything's about money, but money does help with things, doesn't it? So, But I don't think necessarily grades are important. I've still had a great life, um, but obviously your grades do help. And I wish, like I said, that I had maybe gone down some different avenues, but I wouldn't change what I've done for world no, but education is definitely very important fantastic and what do you think you use from your time at school your education in your current ev everyday life it's not even about sort of education it's about finding yourself whilst you're in school as well because you might think that you know yourself and all these people you hang around with at school but truly I didn't really find myself until I left school anyway so you need to whilst you're at school is just try and find yourself because I was a straight 16 year old girl when I was in school and now I'm a 34 year old lesbian <laughs> so and I didn't find that until I'd sort of committed to a role where I could be more comfortable in myself so yeah in school it's just be yourself and find yourself more than anything education and learning obviously helps but being true to who you are is the most important thing wow very nice and was there a particular teacher there that sort of inspired you to go the navy route or was that more of a family sort of decision uh yeah family family decision because I live in Catchett Garrison which is just up uh, North East Yorkshire um, which is the biggest army garrison in Europe so I mean all I ever used to see was soldiers running around here there and everywhere so I just knew that if I'd stayed there I wouldn't have the life that I have had for sure because if you don't get out of there I just think you're kind of in a hole um, but I didn't join the army because nine times out of ten I probably would have been posted back there <laughs> so uh, I mean just to get out but yeah I joined the navy and it was just because of where I lived and my family and growing up Oh, fair enough. Yeah, well, I think it's always good to get out there and explore, which is one of the benefits of online learning is that you yeah. can go out and explore. Um, so, yeah, now if we can sort of bring it back. So we've learned about your education, everything you're doing, but you're already preparing for life after the Navy, aren't you? You've got yeah. something else that alongside everything else you're doing, yeah. you're working on something else, right? Yeah, so I do um, nutritional therapy. as a, So I'm studying in my fourth year and I'll study with that at the minute. Um, but I also run my own business on the side because... The Navy is not forever. It's only for a certain amount of years. Um, and I signed up for 22 years. And we've only four years left. Although I'll have a great pension and I just don't think that's going to be enough to fill the life that I want to lead. Um, so working really hard when I can on my business with online clients. Um, for people that want to lose weight or want to feel more confident or want to go training and want to just sort of, again, find themselves because they might be in a hole somewhere that they've lost themselves a little bit. And we all know that you can either use food as a comfort blanket and or when you stress you eat or so many sort of different things we do with food that we subconsciously don't even realize that I just think if you've got somebody to be accountable to then I like being that person because I've been on the receiving end of sort of binge eating and um, overweight struggling with fitness to sort of change that whole path and I think if I hadn't changed that path of losing all that weight going to Afghanistan realizing that food's very important then I would definitely not be sat here today I think everything happened reason right i oh, definitely <laughs> agree with that yeah and i also encourage people to talk to everyone like if we didn't start chatting in the caravan we'd never known all this yeah, stuff about yeah. you so um but yeah that, no, that's fantastic um so just as we start wrapping up this podcast and i always like to ask two questions of everyone and the first one is what is your fondest memory of your time at school um some things i probably couldn't say <laughs> but, um it's meeting my best friend carmel so we had such a close bond whilst we were in school and we still have that bond now. So I've just come back from home. Bearing in mind, I haven't seen her for maybe nearly three years because I've just, life's took me here, there and everywhere. So whilst I was at home recently, I reconnected with her and it's like we've not even been apart. So 
my fondest memory of school is just again meeting like-minded people and just having a good time um yeah brilliant <laughs> and then my final question which i think is always the most important question that we ask anyone who comes on these podcasts is if you could give a piece of advice to anyone who's in school right now whether they're just about to leave just coming into school not quite knowing what they're going to do with their life or they've got that planned what would that one piece of advice be uh everything doesn't need to be figured out today you not you might be worried about what you're going to do in the future but just focus on here and now um get your grades you will get your grades study study hard because we all know that the harder you study the job opportunities do become greater i feel um but just don't put so much pressure on yourself because that will cause stress and that's and sort of anxieties and all these sort of things that you don't want to be having when you're only 10 11 12 13 i mean it's you're still a child so definitely just focus on the here and now but every day take every day as it comes and trust me what will be will be excellent piece of yeah. advice well we wish you all the best of everything you're going forward for uh we'll stay in contact and if it's all right after this course and when you get that green beret which i'm sure you will yeah. We'll have you back and get a bit of a video review of your green berry on talking to us all again because, yeah, we're generally really excited to... One, I'm really excited that we met. The yeah, fact that you just walk are. in this caravan that we happen to just be sharing for the weekend and then find out all this sort of stuff. You're a true inspirational person to speak Thank to. You, yeah. So um, it's been a real pleasure to have you on. And, yeah, we, we will follow your journey. But we will be. But if those who are watching want to follow your journey as well, where could they find you? Oh, so I've got um, social media, Instagram and Facebook. Um, again, if anyone wants to reach out about weight loss and I'm happy to discuss everything and anything when it, when it comes to it. So it's Mel Haslam uh, on yeah, Instagram and all my social media streams. Fantastic. Yeah, right, well, we'll link all that below. Once again, thank you very much for Mel to join us. Um, and if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, the share button, and um, make sure you join us for our next one as well. Thank you one yeah, more time, Mel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.